Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Thriving Adoptees podcast. And today, I'm finally delighted to be joined by a fellow Brit, right? So, Colin Carruthers, that is a, that is a pen name, right, Colin? Yes, yeah. Yeah, it is Simon, yes, yes. It, it, he is only like 60 miles from me, roughly. He's, he's, he's on the wrong side of the Pennines, or the right <laughs> side, according to him, right? He's laughing. Um, the Pennines are a, 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 like a hill range that separate Yorkshire from, from, from uh, Lancashire, down the middle of the spine of Britain. And um, I'm in Yorkshire and Colin's on the... The, the wrong side but my my mum and dad came from the right uh, from the wrong side as well so i can just about understand the <laughs> lancastrian accent um but yeah we i i say to people i've, I've had more people on hawaii uh, from hawaii than i've had from yorkshire <laughs> um and i don't know about you, lancashire maybe we've had a couple got some more coming up but uh yeah um looking forward to this conversation on he's such a he's such a gentle uh gracious guy so um, we're going to dive into some stuff. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Colin's. Uh, it, it was you're chasing shadows. You're trying to track down your adoptive family for like up to like thirty years. Wow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Simon, for uh, for the invite and for um, the invite to be on this um, podcast. Much appreciated. Yeah. No. Yeah. He. he, he in, in total, it, it, it was about 28 years, something like that, as I was searching. Um, I was told um, pretty early in my life that I was adopted. I'd be about seven or eight um, years of age. Um, and from that moment on, I would occasionally think about um, my biological parents and what they looked like and why they decided not, not to keep me. Um, and um, yeah, I became more inquisitive um, about my biological heritage um, in my mid twenties. Um, suppose that was a time of of my life when um, I broadened my horizons. I stepped out of one world into another. I worked um, for many years in industry and decided to leave industry and, and return to education. And it just broadened my thinking uh, really. Um, so yeah, the, the journey, 28 years, um, finding some information about my um, biological mother was pretty easy. Um, I accessed my birth certificate from social services um, and it provided details of a name and address. Um, but for the father, it said unknown, um, which was um, a little bit of a mystery to me. Um, so yeah, the part of that early search, um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to to meet my birth mother um, as she passed away. Um, but I did, however, have a relationship with her parents for um, for about five years before they also um, passed away. Um, in, I made several efforts in my 30s and 40s. Um, I, I'm, I'm 55 now um, to try and trace my biological father um, after accessing my adoption file. Um, and the adoption file provided some key information about the circumstances for me being given up by my biological mother. But it also provided details of um, two males who were interviewed at the time in relation to being my um, biological father. Um, but uh, fast forward to the 1st of January 2020, um, and I made a promise to myself to try and unravel this mystery over the following 12 months. Many people make, make New Year's resolutions about getting fitter and drinking less and, and, and taking more exercise. But this was my equivalent to that. This was my challenge for that um, particular um, year. Um, and somehow um, I managed to build up relationships with both of the males that were listed in my adoption records and undertake DNA tests with them both. Um, the outcome wasn't as I expected um, without giving too much details away. But as a, as a final throw of the dice, um, I commissioned um, the services of a company to help me trace my biological father. So using DNA, they narrowed down the, the search 
down to two potential individuals. And there were two brothers um, who they suspected to be my biological father. And using this information, um, I built up a relationship um, with the family and, and kind of brought the search to a conclusion um, in January 2021. So yeah, it took about 28 years in total on, on and off, um, but the thoughts were always there um, at the back of, um, back of my mind. Um, and of course, um, when you're on a journey like this, um, the emotions that you experience um, across a search journey um, are varied um, and um, I'm hoping that it made me um, a stronger person. Yeah, yeah. Just l last time you, you, you talked about um, feeling a lot of, a lot of rage um, and was that, was that with you before the search journey or, or was that, was that kind of brought on by the, the, the dead ends that you were facing? Yes, um, probably through the search journey, um, the anger, the upset, the bitterness, um, and it, it, it got triggered at different points, um, I suppose, after um, retrieving my adoption file and reading that, um, it was so blunt and to the point. Um, you know, it, it was quite clear that um, there'd been no effort made um, in trying to keep me by my mother's biological family. And, it, you know, it, the information in there um, read that the, the sooner I was adopted out, the better, really. Um, but it, that made me quite angry because, um, like I said, I'd spent some time with her parents and they'd put quite a different spin on, on the version of events. But to read it in black and white, another version, that, that made me quite, um, yeah, quite bitter, really. Um, I think some something else that made me quite cross was the costs um, associated with this, the, the search itself. Um, you know, cost to pay for DNA tests, to pay for court fees, cost to hire private investigators, to commission search companies. Um, I was angry, um, not only that I had to foot the bill um, to try and understand my biological um, heritage, but also really thinking about everybody else that got to do the same thing. Um, and I, I just began to question, you know, what happens if you're not able to finance a search like that? Um, where does that leave you? Um, luckily, I was able to do it, but I know that not, not everybody's in the in the same um, position. Um, I think another area where which made me quite angry was, um, and, and it it was about how I was thinking about the the men that were listed in the adoption file. And what role they played, you know, in bringing me into the world, um, particularly one of the individuals, he didn't seem to take any responsibility. And when you're reading phrases in the, the adoption file, like, um, I will never accept this child as mine. Um, and that the fact that he wanted to maintain his freedom, um, it, 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 it resulted in me forming quite a, a strong view of that person, which wasn't really very positive. Um, however, um, further in, yeah, and it, it was, it, I was on a learning curve. Further into the search journey, my emotions changed towards this individual, and then I felt empathy towards him. So you know, the, the emotions were swinging from uh, one side to another, and I had a tinge of guilt. Um, because I've been chasing him down, chasing down the wrong man for, for so many years. It's just a roller coaster, really, of of, of emotions. Um, so, yeah, the, the anger, the upset, bitterness kept emerging. And I think one of the one of the things that um, I think is really important is that it's just about it, it was that my basic human right, um, I felt that people were taking it seriously or that it wasn't important. You know, what's more important than not understanding where you come from? I couldn't, I couldn't get my head around that. And um, yeah, it, 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 it did affect um, that 
particular um, type of um, emotions. And you know, sometimes um, even the court and the solicitors um, that I thought were there to help you, you know, I felt that I was wasting their time and they were, they were kind of telling me that as well. So, yeah, that was, um, the, like I said, Sam, there was lots of different emotions um, along the journey, which uh, I can go into a bit more detail if you want me to. Well, yeah, I mean, did you get any, you, you're dealing with all these different people did you get any kind of like um emotional help uh, along the journey or, or was it literally was it just down to your um to your um, missus or you know what um i had close family around me um <clears throat> and particularly my wife and um my brother-in-law and it was um it was kind of kept internally within the family yeah but another emotion that that um, seemed to um, go through from time to time was loneliness on the journey. Um, although I had my close family around me, um, I felt that I was alone on the journey, a strange feeling really. You know, I, I was the only human being, as far as I was aware, <clears throat> to tread this unconventional path. Um, and I had to work through it on my own because nobody else had the answers. There was no blueprint for me um, for me to follow. Um, it was it was, I was kind of making this up as I was going along and just hoping for the best. So loneliness came into um, in, into play um, from time to time as well, as did things like despair and hopelessness. You know, the feeling after taking each DNA test that turned out to be negative, um, just didn't know where to, 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 to turn next. Um, like I said, there was no blueprint to follow. Um, nobody could provide advice to help me reach my goal and conclude my search. Um, and in, in terms of despair and hopelessness, you know, two or three times um, I did, you know, I thought I was pretty strong, but I, I, I broke down on the journey. Um, because the challenge had just stopped too much for me at that particular moment in time. But luckily, um, you know, I, I managed to bounce back. Um, and, and I was speaking to somebody recently, in fact, it could have been you, Simon, um, who said it, it isn't about developing resilience. It's about understanding how resilient you are. And I suppose this was a really good example for me on this um, journey. Um, to understand how, how resilient I was because, um, yeah, it, it could have got the better of me on several occasions, but somehow I managed to bounce back because yeah. I was determined to reach the end. Yeah. Yeah, it probably was because I've got a, bee, a bit of a bee in my bonnet about this. So, the, the um, you know, we're, we all go through tough, tough times um, and this search stuff for us adoptees is tough stuff. And, uh, and, and there's a there's a, a world of people out there who are who are telling us that they they can make us more resilient, and uh, it and and we you know we talk about people use the word strengthening strengthening resilience, and it and it's it's made out like um like strengthening our muscles like going to a gym, and and they they kind of the the headlines are about being a more more resilient about bouncing back and, and then uh, the, the headline on the social media advert or whatever whatever it is on the web page and it says you know it says it's got this headline then and then it and then it, it builds rapport with us it, it 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 sows the seeds within us that we are uh, you know floundering we are struggling we are you know we we we're, we're, we're uh, having difficulties uh, and and then it says, uh, it usually says something, you know, I, I was just like you until I found X, Y, Z. And and then if you spend this time or money or both with me, then you will learn how to become resilient. Uh, and um, I, I think it's, as you say, it, it, it's, it, it's we, we find resilience within us. It, it, it's always there, but we don't see it for ourselves. So resilience is uncovered by the, the fact that we go back, uh, we go back into the into this journey after these setbacks. You know, you're getting these DNA results, and it's, th this isn't the wrong. You know, this is the 
this is the wrong guy. You're getting the courts knocking you back and treating you like you're a, a you know, uh, like a, that you're, you're you're frustrating them, and you know they're getting paid to do the job, not doing. So you know, we we dis- the, the reason I'm banging on about it is because it's a, it, for me it's a, it's like a it's a teachable, shareable point, right? Uh, listeners, you know, you have we all have that resilience within us, right? It, it it comes with us. We we learn. I think we learn fragility, you know. Um. So, uh. When the when the the kid falls over, um, you know, little toddler fall, falls over. Kid's not bothered about having fallen over, but the the mum or dad watching is like, you know, scared of any physical result. And and, and then the uh, so the, the, there's this there's this uh, worry, and and the kid sees that their parent is worried about them falling over. And, and 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 learns that there is uh, l- learned learn fragility, and, and also learns that if they if we cry, then we get attention. So we kind of it we we boost up our um, yeah, we 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 cry we cry we get attention we fall over we get attention, and and we learn fragility. So yeah, uh, resilience is uncovered. It's something that we see for ourselves. You know, like we get through it, and so you get to this twenty-eight year journey. How how on earth did I how how on earth did I keep going despite the setbacks? Well, you did, and 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 you've learned something about your um, your resilience, your strength, your your inner 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 grit. You've been you've been riding this roller coaster. You've been riding 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 this ro- emotional roller coaster. And yet, you've kept going. Yes, you, um, you you're quite right there, Simon. I did manage to keep going um, somehow. One of the early emotions on the journey was um, confusion. Um, when you see your birth certificate, your your you know your um, natural birth certificate for the first time, um, and you start absorbing your true identity when you see you know the 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 name that you were given when you were born um that is confusing um seeing this information in 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 black and white just began to i began to question my own identity um i was kind of caught between the person i'd become and what i could have been i was kind of in no man's land somewhere along somewhere along um, those lines um so yeah that that was something um to um, absorb and to take on board early in the search um um amongst with everything else um so yeah and i'm sure that um, other adoptees on the journey have also got that challenge yeah. to to overcome um so yeah the the it was it was just a complete. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that it was like emotional growth. It was just varied emotions um, along the route. Um, disappointment, frustration, which is slightly different to being angry. Um, when you know when you're rejected by um, the two men in the adoption file when social services um, went knocking and wanted to make dialogue. Um, that frustration and the torment day after day of, of not understanding your ancestry, it just became inescapable for me. It was just always there. Yeah. Um, and the frustration of, um, with a journey like this, often it's a waiting game. It's waiting for information. It's waiting for letters. You build your hopes up. So waiting for, for you know letters sent out by the search company. Um, that that weren't responded to. Um, you, you you're constantly checking your emails. You know, have I missed anything? But n- nothing ever came, and and that it just torments you because you start your mind starts playing tricks, and 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 then you become negative, and then you're on this downward cycle, and and, and you know, then you feel the problem is with yourself, um, and that's when you know things like 
shame. That's another emotion. Shame kicks in at, at, at that point. Um, you know that that feeling came from time to time. Um, so this would, you know, this is kind of the belief that you know you, you're feeling unloved. Um, every time there's a rejection on the search journey, and there were many, um, you know, you you start to believe that it's you that you're incomplete, you're defective. Um, you weren't a great baby, you know, and I'm pre I'm presuming other adoptees um, are quite familiar with those feelings. Yeah. Um, so yeah, shame shame kicked in from from time to time. So yeah, lots of lots of different um, lots of different emotions. Um, I I think summing it up and and you know thinking about my own experience. Asking from asking for help, leaning on people. Um, I, I felt that the world was against me. You know, it's yeah. it's it, it's it's Simon it's, it's Simon versus the world. Why won't this person do this for me? And uh, and I from from those places, I've taken stuff far too personally right so through that lens through the the, the lens of the world's again simon i I've, I've actually started projecting that right so some the stuff that was never personal has been i have taken personally Yes, um, I can relate to that as well. Yes, um, and and for me, um, it, it, it maybe took a while, but um, you've got to find ways to to cope. You've got to have strategies in place to be able to deal with that when it comes along. And obviously, I started this journey when I was 24, 25. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an older guy now, so I'm a bit more experienced and mature. And, and um, I think I've learned a lot along the way about managing myself um, because of the impact of, of adoption and also this, this, this search. So, yeah. So when, um, when I come across those situations now, um, it, it's, I am able to deal with it in a much more mature way and it doesn't affect me as much. I'm not saying that it's, it's totally gone, but, um, you know, it, things... Um, I've never been able to take criticism that well, um, but I am learning to, to deal with that a little bit um, better these days because criticism for me equals a, a rejection. Um, and it's... Um, it's something that I've got a better grip of these days. So yeah, I can relate to what you're saying, Simon. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was talking about some stuff as a kid with this, you know, um, to a, a coach lady um, a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, and um, it, it's something came up and, and it was a, it, it's a, a, a silly kind of trivial example but it's obviously lodged in my head because 40 years later, I'm remembering it, right? So this time of the year, or maybe July, we're recording this in, in, in August, early August 23. Uh, July time, I used to go on scout camp and I was like, after a while, we got older and you know, I was, the, I was the, the, the kid who was in charge of the tent, a younger kid. And they do an inspection each day, right? To make sure your kit's clean. And we hadn't cleaned, we hadn't cleaned the, um, the pan, one of the pans, but it's frying pan, right? And and he, and they after they they came around and they did the inspection, and he said, I, "I've written pathetic in in the in the fat that's left in the frying pan," and it's just like, oh, that's like, e, that's really, really, re really harsh. Now. What was he, you know, and I took it like he's calling me pathetic. I'm I, like, did I, did I do the washing up? Did I do that pan? Was I, you know, am I, am I responsible for checking everything that the, 
the the younger kids have done should i've done and, and it whole spirals down he's just trying to teach me a lesson about the thing but i'm taking it i'm taking it ultra yeah ultra person yeah, yeah. and, and, you've got um, and that's the projection yeah, thing that's projection. It. yeah um and, and and trying to ensure that you don't spiral out of control because of one comment and then it can lead from one thing to another yeah i un yeah. understand so yeah being able to come up I would just, I just shut down in that, you know, like the trauma responses, uh, fight, flight, fight, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. In, in usually I would, usually I, I, I freeze because some things within me that I, I, I know, I'm, I know it could escalate, right? Um, how could I run away? I, I didn't have that option, you know, I'm, you know, a couple of hundred miles away from home, a hundred miles away from home. There's no way I could fly, right? Fawn, no, nah, it's not going to, the guy's a hard ass, he's not going to do it. So I just froze, you know, just froze in, in a minute. But yeah, um, one of the, it, it's a big thing. Another one of my mentors once said this, um, whether we see it, it she said that it's uh, something from Einstein. I said, uh, the, the biggest question we can ask ourselves is, is the world for us or against us? And it's like, if we're thinking it's against us, then we're going to be projecting that everywhere. And, you know, like, if there'd been a scout badge for that, <laughs> I would have got it, right? I'd probably still get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it, during the journey, um, yeah, I often thought that um, <clears throat> I often thought that the the world was against me, um, <clears throat> and that um, whichever way I turned, you know, I was, I was starting to I was starting to be negative before I even turned in that direction to think, well, I'm not going to get anywhere this this way either. Um, but you, you've got to, you've got to be determined. Um, you've got to keep going, and you've got to keep finding new avenues to explore and um many of them are dead ends but um you know thankfully um for me um i managed to um find the the the, the correct research company um to support me and they kind of got me through to, to the end of the search now when when i was working with that research company um for the first time on that journey, um, I, you know, we've, you asked an earlier question about being um, supported, feeling supported. I felt fully supported um, for, from say February um, twenty one through to about June twenty one. Fully supported, started to relax, started to think this is going in the right direction because they were <clears throat> um, feeding me information, which um, I knew was backed up by scientific evidence and it gave me comfort. It, in fact, you know, they were my comfort blanket for five months. There's no doubt about it. Um, they took the search as far as they could, um, <clears throat> provided me with a, um, a scientific report and it, it outlined the work that they'd done. Um, and then I was left to go merrily on my way myself. But that comfort blanket was taken away, Simon. So I was back on my own again for the final leg of the journey, um, which um, I did bring to a conclusion. Um, so yeah, it's another emotion um, that you face on a journey. Um, and, and there was, at the time, there was no better feeling to have that company by my side. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. My, I, I went through my search after I'd done quite a lot of work on myself. Right? So I'd started doing the sort of personal development stuff probably. 2009 maybe 2000 no, 2007 2000 
no, no. And then I didn't go on the search until probably 2015. But when I, uh, my, my stop, um, my pause, I got the, I got the, the, the name of my birth mother on a piece of paper and my first name as well. Now, I was expecting to get, you know, the guy had rung me up or emailed and say, oh, we've, we've got we've got this documentation. Do you want to come and pick it up? I was expecting to have just see the, the name of my birth mother and probably not my father. I, I wasn't sure, but I, I hadn't really. But I, I, I wasn't ready for that, you know, for for um, my first name, David Anthony Flower, to be listed on that thing. And uh, my first reaction to that was, oh, I've had two names. Uh, you were, you're alluding to that early earlier on. And um, I, I, I think it's, it's not many people talk about it for some reason, but this, this idea that we've, we've had two names. So no wonder identity is so confusing. You can't get more confusing confusing than that. Um, but yeah, I, 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 but at, at the same time, I was like, well, they're just kind of labels a bit further on. I was a bit longer on. I was thinking about it and they're, they're, they're just labels anyway. Yeah, they, they are, but, I'd not too. I'd not thought too much into um, in, into the name issue. I tried not to anyway. It did crop up from time to time. Um, but recently, I took part in um, in some research on being undertaken by Nottingham University, which was focusing very much for adoptees around um, how much names mean to you, and you know there, there was quite. It, 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 it was quite in depth, really, that research. Um, I found it quite interesting, but um, it, amazingly, what what I've what I've actually done is um, because recently we've reverted back to to the. To, I think I've mentioned this to you before, Sam, and we, we've as a family we've reverted back to and the surname that I was born with um, through various reasons. Um, and it feels so right to, wow. to do that. I feel so at home with with it. Um, and um, I've e I, I have even gone to the steps of um, believe it or not in in, in having the the name tattooed on on my leg, which is very very unusual for me um, to, to be to be thinking about tattoos um so yeah I've, i have gone down that route and, and i'm quite happy with it as well um i mentioned earlier on that that the the search was a quite a private um affair um i didn't really talk about it to anybody um for various reasons but when when i decided to make that concerted effort at, at the beginning of 2020 um i did um, have the help of uh, an accomplice, um, a work colleague. Um, we were out one night, we were having a few drinks and um, yeah, we, <clears throat> we were chatting about this, um, you know, this, this search of mine and he offered up some help. So I had an accomplice um, early in um, 2020 or 2021, 2020. Um, and that was an important step because he, he was able to um, gain access and build up some relationships um, as part of that journey that I might not have been able to do. Um, so it was a really, really useful. Um, we didn't really want to be um, disingenuous, but um, sometimes, you know, you, you might have to go down that route to, you know, trigger some um, reaction or get insight to certain information but it you know it, it worked out okay no, nobody was upset and um we built up some relationships with people that allowed me to continue with the search so yeah it was a private affair but more people came into play as um as the search um developed 
I think it's also important to say that um, that um, <clears throat> I built up some, you know, because satisfaction was an emotion. You know, I, I, a lot of the things I've talked about are quite negative, but satisfaction, um, affection, you know, these were all other emotions that, that came into play. And I met some lovely people um, and relatives while on the journey. Um, you know, they rooted for me when it got tough. They gave me um, encouragement when um, it was rough going. And, and I've maintained contact with um, those people um, afterwards, which is, which is really positive. Um, and, uh, you know, being positive again, another emotion was happiness, you know. Um, when, when my potential um, didn't turn out to be that way, but my potential biological father, the one that had resisted making, you know, making contact for so many years, agreed to have an, a DNA test with me um, one Christmas Eve. You know, I was I was so happy about that. He didn't, you know, he didn't um, turn out as, as I expected. Um, but another point on the journey where I was really happy was um, a phone call I received on one Christmas Eve from my biological father, and he agreed to meet me. So there were points on the journey where... Um, it, it, it was a nice place to be. It wasn't all negative. I don't want it to sound too, you know, all negative. Yeah. Well, that's the roller coaster, isn't it? The ups and the ups and the downs. The 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 hope and the, the hope and, and the, the the hope and the uh, the darkness and the light. Um. Yeah. Tenacious is is the word that really sums up for me. You know, like what you know, it, it, it's. It, it's a it's a it's a tenaciousness but there's something driving it right it's a it's a deep it's a deep thing yeah it, it's um yeah maybe it's part of my characteristics um t tenacious I'm, I'm i am like this in my in my work you know i'm, I'm a public sector officer in my working life I'm, I'm i'm not an author or anything like that so tenacious to to, um, to ensure that um, the task is done, to ensure you you know you you do your best in 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 all walks of life, um, no matter what that is, your work in life, um, your hobbies, your, your DIY in the garden, you know whatever that may be. Um, I try to do it to the best of my my ability, um, but yeah. Tenacious is, is is not a bad shout. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I I can't I, I can't agree. I, I agree with the tenacity thing, but I can't I can't um, uh, agree with the DIY stuff because that isn't my thing. That's not my bag. That's not my bag at all. <laughs> I'm I'm not. I'm hopeless. You know, with uh, I, I get I get severe uh, drilling from my missus about how. Crap! I am a DIY. Yeah. <laughs> um. So you've kind of you've alluded to what you've learned about yourself. How how would you uh, earlier? How how would you sum how would you sum that up? What well what sort of uh, yeah we've we've talked obviously at the length about the resilience we've pushed on the tenacity, uh, strength of character. How how would you kind of sum it up? Uh, what you discovered about yourself through this. 28 years, 28 years. Um, well, I think um, to, to sum it up, I think if you're entering into a into a search such as this, um, don't predict the answer before you you start. I think um, I think that's something that that I've certainly learned along the way you can never predict the outcome of a search such as this it's it's really important to be open-minded um and i think um don't build it up to be a quick search um you know you, you've got to have such low expectations um of, of what you, you you might find um at the you know, as part of the search, 
Otherwise, you'd just be disappointed um, time and time again. Um, obviously, um, I've learned that. Obviously, I didn't do it on the search. You know, it's things that um, I've experienced and I can share with with other people who, who um, might be on this journey or might be thinking about starting this journey. Um, I've, I've got a lot to, to, to share through what I went through. But I, I also recognise that everybody's search will be different. Some might be quite quick. Um, I think it's pretty important to say as well that when I started this journey, um, social media really wasn't a thing, you know. And and I think um, social media may have made it um, um, a little bit quicker for people who are searching you know now we've got things like Facebook but there's probably dangers linked to to that moving in too quickly um I try to be quite cautious with mine and, and try you know the, the key thing for me was to try not to upset the apple cart for, for, for the families I was reaching out to um you don't always know who you're talking to you don't always know what they know um so it, it's um it's a little bit of a minefield um and um all you can do sam is 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 the best um do it with the best intentions um um of, of trying to satisfy your own um interests and, and your own um needs and without you know without kind of um upsetting people along the way because that that is I think that would be quite easy to do um and, and that's something that I came across from time to time so yeah that's I don't know whether that's useful yeah, that's great that's great um is there anything else that I've not asked you about that you'd like to share um no I, I don't think so I think um <laughs> I think we've covered um, most things. I think that the, the, the really strong, it's this human rights thing that that needs to be, um, I think it needs to be addressed at a higher level because um, understand your, your biological heritage, it should be on, it should be higher up on the radar and, and it should be something that we all, have access to quite easily without having to yeah. wait 28 years um, or waste 28 years of, of, of your life trying to find find out um, about the information. So, yeah, human rights. And also, you know, if there was any financial support towards making this journey a little bit cheaper or maybe a free journey, that, that's that's got to be coming to the equation as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's uh, I was chatting to somebody at length about this human rights stuff and frustration with the system essentially Frus frustrations with bureaucracy uh, and it seems to me to be A tough one because I no amount of no amount of frustration is on on my part is going to change it, change the system, and I I I I get frustrated with it, and yet I I've, I I used to have the word advocate on my blurb, you know, so if you say. Simon Dan, adoptee, podcaster, speaker, advocate, or something like that. And I've, I've taken the advocate bit off my blurb because I'm not doing it. And, and I, I don't really, I, I don't, I don't feel called to change the system somehow. Like I, I, maybe I just don't have the patience for it, or I don't know. It's not, it's not. But I think I think largely it's because yeah, what I'm, how's that gonna? Yeah, I'm not really saying this. I'm not expressing this very well. 
I, I, I'd rather keep my focus on what I can change. Yes. Yeah. What, yeah. what I can change, or what I can change faster, or what I'm more set up to change, or whatever. So, I, how do you see that stuff? Well, well, when when you're in the midst of um, your own personal search journey, and it and it ain't going your way, and you're angry, you're upset, and you're bitter about everything. Um, um, because you're hitting too many brick walls and you're not getting the information that you want. Um, and you add this, these elements to the agenda. You that's, know, funny, yeah. that's probably um, why it was highlighted in my mind. I've calmed down now. <laughs> now I've got to the end of the journey. I've calmed down. I still feel strongly about it. I still read about... Um, Facebook posts every single day um, of the year, um, people trying to find loved ones, trying to find um, their own heritage. Um, and, and, you know, some people, they're all at different stages. Some people are tearing their hair out like I was. Um, but when you're going through it, you know, the, the these things can, you know, they can be accelerated, you know, and, and made even bigger than perhaps it should be. So, um, that's why at the time, um, as part of capturing the information about this journey, um, I flagged it up. Um, and but I think I think my words were that's an issue for another day. Um, so I think um, I think I think I'm in that place now, Simon. If, if if you know what I mean. So as always, listeners, I urge you to check out the guests. Um, what is it? Uh, kind of got a, a book out so there's a link in the in the show notes to the, the book so you can get it on amazon uh and um thank you very much for uh sharing sharing your learnings uh guy it's been a, been i really in, enjoyed it and yeah it's such a lovely humble guy I, I, I love that. okay thanks for having me take care everybody thank you Bye. thanks listeners goodbye cheers okay bye